Hello, this is John Purcell from QuantumLifetime.com. In this five-minute quantum physics tutorial, we're going to look at applying Malice's law to polarizers, and we're going to look at the three-polarizer paradox. I'm going to assume, by the way, that you're familiar with measuring angles in radians. So if you're not, you might want to uh, just look through a quick tutorial on that somewhere on the internet. So let's revisit the situation where we've got unpolarized light here. So this is on what? unpolarized, unpolarized, <laughs> terrible writing. And uh, here it goes through a, a polarizer and then it passes on and there's another polarizer here that's at right angles to the first. So this polarizer is at 90 degrees or pi over two radians to the first one. And we want to know how much light is transmitted. So here, let's call the intensity of light here I naught. So that's I naught. What's the intensity of light here, which is we're going to call I1? And to apply Malice's law, we say that I1 equals I naught, and we saw all this in the last tutorial, of course, cos squared of the angle which uh, between these two polarizers, which is 90 degrees or pi over 2. Now, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so that means that. Um, the intensity of the transmitted light at the end there, I1, is going to be zero. Let's, let's take a, a look at a, a slightly more interesting situation because we knew that was going to happen already. Let's imagine we've got light here that's unpolarized, so unpolarized. It hits the polarizer here, just as before, and we're going to make it hit a polarizer here just as before, that's at 90 degrees. So um, let's look at the light that's transmitted from here. But in between, I'm going to put another polarizer. I'm going to insert another polarizer between the two that's at 45 degrees to the first one, or to both of them for that matter. So we want to know, um, this is I naught, let's say. The intensity here of the polarized light coming through the first filter is I naught. Let's call this I1. So it's a different I1 now, of course. And um, let's call this I2 and apply Malice's law. And we can say that um, I1 here is going to be equal to I0, the original, the original intensity of the polarized light hitting this uh, filter number 2 here, times cosine of the angle between filter 2 and filter 1, which is... Uh, pi over 4, it's 45 degrees. Now, uh, cosine of uh, 45 degrees, or pi, pi over 4, is actually 0 0.7, and if you square it, you get exactly 0 0.5. So it's going to equal, it's going to be equal to 1 half of I naught. So I, I1 is equal to a half of I naught, and uh, you could follow this exactly the same logic to figure out what I2 is, because again, you have an angle of 45 degrees between 2 and 3, polarizes 2 and 3. So we can say that I2 is equal to 1 half, the final intensity is equal to 1 half of uh, the intensity at I1, which is therefore equal to a quarter of the intensity I0, because you're just halving it every time it goes through a polarizer at 45 degrees, basically. So that the kind of funny thing here is uh, some light gets transmitted, a quarter of it, if you pass it, if you insert an extra polarizer just in the middle there, which is a little bit strange. But it's not that strange because if you think about it, this kind of thing uh, happens with any kind of force, or it can happen. And we, you know, light, as we've seen, can be thought of as an electric field, or that's uh, the most prominent thing about it, that's just trying to move charged particles up and down, basically. So even if, um, this is going to be a little bit contrived, but imagine that you've got a wind here. This is wind, and it's trying to blow a ship. But the thing is, the ship's constrained to move on like a, um, a sort of steel rod in the ocean here then the ship will end up being blown this way. Now imagine a sort of movable wall here, and the ship is going to push on this wall. And imagine that this movable wall can only move this way. It's on casters or something. Then uh, the ship will move the wall to the right, and we can even use the wall 
to move a cannonball or something. Maybe not a cannonball because it wouldn't float, but something that floats to the right. So by putting something at 45 degrees in, in between this um, a force and the thing that we want to be moved by the force, even here using just wind, we can trans transform uh, a force in this direction into a force in a direction at right angles. But now it's going to get a little stranger in the next tutorial when we look at photons and how photons appear to work with these uh, polarizers. So that's it for this time. You can find uh, more tutorials and a podcast about consciousness from me on www.quantumlifetime.com. So check that out. My name's John Purcell and until next time, keep it real.